Hello guys! So this week we'll focus on fractions as it is part of your competencies. I'll post materials that will enable us master how to solve any given problem involving fractions. Among the materials I'll post will be additional videos from Khan, Khan Academy as well as um, worksheets. Please, please, please turn in assignments. You're the reason I'm posting them. Lastly, don't forget to ask any questions where applicable. All right now, get to work. What are fractions? Fractions could either be part of a whole or part of a group. They consist of two numbers separated by a bar between them. For example, three out of four. The top number is called the numerator and is the amount of portions you have, while the bottom number is called the denominator and is the total amount of portions in a whole or total amount of groups. Out of 40 students in the lower school, 22 are girls and 18 are boys. What fraction of students are girls? Remember, the numerator is the amount of portions you have, while the denominator, the denominator is the total amount of portions in a whole or total amount of groups. The numerator will be the total number of girls, which is 22, and the denominator will be the total number of students we have, which is 40. Hence, our fraction will be 22 out of 40. Take a look at this picture containing bananas, apples, and oranges. The first question is asking, what's the fraction of apples? Our numerator will be the amount of apples, which is 3, from the picture, while the denominator will be the total amount of fruits, which is 10. Hence, our fraction will be 3 out of 10. Next question is asking, what's the fraction of bananas? Our numerator will be the no amount of bananas, which is 5, while the denominator will be the total amount of fruits, which is 10. Hence, our fraction will be 5 out of 10. The third question asks, what's the fraction of oranges? Our numerator would be 2, which is the total amount of oranges, while the denominator is 10, which is, which is the total number of fruits. Hence, our fraction would be 2 out of 10. The last question is asking, what's the fraction of fruits? Now from the picture, we see that every single item is a fruit. Hence, our numerator would be the total amount of fruits, which is 10, and the denominator, which is the total number of fruits, would, would also be 10. Hence, our fraction would be 10 out of 10. It will sometimes be useful to remember that fractions can indicate division. One third can mean one divided by three, as well as one part out of three parts. How do we then reduce fractions? We reduce fractions by dividing both the numerator and the, den the denominator by the same factor or number. Dividing is a form of reducing in maths, and if we want to increase, we can multiply. Consider this. How do we reduce six over 18? To reduce this, we we'll divide by a common factor. What common factor can divide both 6 and 18 without a remainder? In this case, both numbers are even, hence they are both divisible by 2. And if you know your multiplication table by heart, you can also tell that 3 and 6 can divide 6 and 18 without a remainder. Go ahead and divide both the numerator and denominator by the common factor. You should keep dividing till it's no longer divisible by any number except one. Your answer then becomes one third. We can also reduce, we can also reduce by canceling out duplicates by writing out the factors of the numerators and the denominators. In this case, the factors of six are two and three because two times three gives us six. The factors of 18 are 2 times 3 times 3, which is 18. Now, we can go ahead and check for duplicates or repetitions of the same number that appear on the numerator and on the denominator. When, when we cancel the duplicates out, we're left with 1 as a numerator and 3 as a denominator. Note that we didn't say 0 is left as a numerator. 1 is left 
because when we divide a number by itself, it gives you 1. Go ahead, pause this video, solve this on your own. The question will also be posted on the Google Classroom, so post your answers on it to find out if you're correct or wrong. Now let's move on. To add fractions, they should have common denominators. As the proverb says, you can only add apples to apples, not apples to oranges. In the context of adding fractions, you can't combine, say, one quarter and two fifths because they are fractions of different types, one being fourths and the other being fifths. They are apples and oranges. To add them, you first have to change the denominators to same number. To solve this question, you should ask yourself a few things. First, do you have the same denominator? The answer is yes. Secondly, add the numerators and keep the denominators as we can see in the solution below. Our answer becomes 5 over 4, which is an improper fraction, and we must change it to a mixed fraction by dividing the numerator by the denominator. When 4 divides 5, you have 1, then that becomes the whole number. 1 is left as a remainder, that becomes a numerator. The denominator remains unchanged, hence our final answer becomes 1 whole and a quarter. To solve this question, consider, does the fraction have the same denominator? The answer is no. Then you should find the LCM or the lowest common multiple. I'll provide a link to learn how to find LCMs for those of us that have forgotten. The LCM of 4 and 8 is 8. Then we should proceed to find the equivalent fraction that has the LCM as the denominator, as seen in the solution below. The first fraction already has 8 as its denominator. We don't need to change it. The second number has 4 as a denominator. Hence, we should change it to an equivalent fraction that has 8 as a denominator. What would you multiply to 4 that will give you 8? The answer is 2. Hence, we multiply the numerator and the denominator each by 2, which turns the fraction to 2 out of 8. Now, since both fractions have same denominators, we proceed to subtract the numerators 4 minus 2, and that gives us 2. The denominator stays the same. Afterwards, we proceed to reduce our, our answer, which yields 1 out of 4. That gives us 1 quarter as our final result. Go ahead, pause this video, solve these on your own. The question would also be posted on the Google Classroom, so post your answers on it to find out if you're correct or wrong. Multiplying fractions is easy. You multiply the top numbers or the numerator and you multiply the denominators. For example, 2 out of 5 times 4 out of 3. All you need to do is multiply the numerator, which is 2 times 4, which is 8, Multiply the denominator, which is 5 times 3, and the answer, the denominator of your answer will be 15. When it's possible, ensure you reduce the fraction by cancelling off the common factors. In the example above, however, nothing reduces because 8 and 15 have no factors in common. Dividing fraction is just as easy as multiplying them. There is just one extra step. When you divide by a fraction, the first thing you do is flip and multiply. That is, you take the second fraction, flip it upside down, and then you multiply the first fraction by this flipped fraction. Now look at this example. You're having 3 over 5 divided by 9 out of 4. The first step will be to convert this to multiplication by flipping the second fraction, 9 over 4, to get 4 out of 9. Then I can proceed with the simple multiplication to give us 12 out of 45. Afterwards, go ahead, reduce the fraction by cancelling off duplicated factors. And when we do that, our answer is 4 out of 15. Let's try one more. 
To solve this question, first you have to convert the mixed numbers to improper fraction. 4 whole 3 out of 8 becomes 35 over 8 by multiplying the denominator and the whole number, then add the numerator. Denominate, the denominator remains the same. I'll also convert the second fraction to an improper fraction, making it 17 out of 6. Once I've changed the mixed fractions to improper fractions, then I can flip and multiply. We can reduce the fractions by dividing numerators by denominators or to cross divide. We're left with 35 out of 4 times 3 over 17. When we multiply, our answer becomes 105 out of 68. Remember, to always change your improper fractions to mixed fraction. Hence, our answer becomes 1 whole 37 out of 68. Go ahead to pause this video and solve these on your own. The question will also be posted on the Google Classroom, so post your answers on it to find out if you're correct or wrong. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to utilize all the materials I'll post on the Google Classroom to enable you master master the skill of solving problems involving fractions. Post questions and they'll be responded to. Don't forget to also stay tuned to the Abrazo social media platforms to stay informed. Bye for now.